Welcome back to Five Rounds. UFC 192 in the books. It went down in Texas this past weekend. It saw, we saw the debut of the heavily hyped uh, Sage Northcutt. And you just never know from these guys. It's like, okay, yeah, you're 5-0, and oh, but now you're in the big show. Can you hang with the top fighters on the planet? Is Francisco Trevino one of those guys? Doesn't matter because Northcutt just dispatched him very, very impressively within the first minute of the fight. Is this a guy that we are going to look for to be a star in the Ultimate Fighting Championship? Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes you're already a star before you're even you've had your hit record or before you've had your definitive UFC show. Look at this fight now. Trevino did not look good. He didn't come in shape. He was five pounds overweight, super hesitant. So your job is to get him out of there. When he falls, watch the hand speed here. Let's it go, and this takedown. This, to me, shows yeah. where this kid's yeah. at. Watch there. The ability to decide that in minute one of your first UFC fight, to make that call in the middle of the fight, that is impressive. It shows what level he's working at. And, uh, you know, that's just a slip, but you do what you gotta do, and he did what he got to did. And uh, perfect, perfect debut. And if you're the UFC, it's like, well, he's handsome, he's muscular, okay. he's young, everyone loves him. Oh, great, we got him. Uh, he's got a one-minute KO too in his debut. And you say perfect, perfect as a professional now, six and zero. Oh. What I look at is you look back to his amateur record. The first time he fought in amateur mixed martial arts, he was stopped by TKO, and he decided, you know what, this is for me. I'm going to get back yeah. into the fire, and that's why I think this guy's going to be a star. You're right. It's awesome that he has experienced loss. And, of course, he's fought at a high level in karate and in kickboxing and in a variety of traditional martial arts. He has experienced losing. It's important that he does, but it's important that he learns from it. And uh, you see the way that he moves. You know, is he going to be a top 155er in the next two years? No, I sure hope they don't get him in there against the top guys yet at 19 years old. But he has all this extra stuff, that ability to wrestle. Look at this. That ability to wrestle is a big one when you're going to be able to freewheel with your punches and your kicks. He's going to be fun to watch, that's for sure. And again, you look at that. You know that he's got the striking background, but to be able to take out your opponents by utilizing grappling, using wrestling, and finishing guys with submissions as well, it's, it proves that he is out to be a well-rounded fighter, and the, the celebrations are awesome. Yeah, hey man, like I said, you know, you've got a few of these ones who, in some, t you know, in the old days, whatever it is you did, you uh, you sing, you act, you're a performer, you're a football player, you become great at something, you become so great that people talk and people interview. As they talk and they interview, eventually you become famous. Now, somehow in our culture, we don't mind making you famous first, and then you have to live up to it, which is really hard. That's that's incredibly challenging for these young guys. You look at Paige Van Zandt. I mean, this guy's basically Sage Van Zandt, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the same deal. You know, young, beautiful, uh, and likable, and all those star power things, but now you have to perform. That's a lot of pressure on this young girl and on this young uh, uh, Kendall. Uh, for Sage Northcutt, do you expect that he will stick with the team that he has? We know that his father is his head striking coach. Do you expect that's a trend that will continue, or, you know, being in the UFC, being at the highest level, will that force him to change his training regimen? We'll have to see, you know, it's the, the best ones, in my opinion, is a little from column A and a little from column D and a little from column T. You know, uh, Jordan Meehan was an elite, he's retired now, but he was an elite youngster who trained with his dad, Lee, who's a genius. He's brilliant in his own right. But Jordan also traveled and yep. acquired knowledge. His, his father was still his main head coach and still his main guy and always would be, but he acquired all this other knowledge. And I hope that's what this kid does. You see what he can do. You know, I, I'd like to see him fight that James Mutasri, Mutasri kid. He only has one win in the UFC, but he's a high-level Taekwondo guy. This was a, a Pan American Games Taekwondo champion. You've got the good-looking kid who's a karate guy. We get karate versus Taekwondo. It's fun, man. What do you expect from the UFC? Are they going to give this guy an, uh, not, I'm not, not to say an easy path because there's no easy fights essentially in the UFC. You've got to get in there and face another combatant that's trying to knock your head off. But are they going to utilize him to try to say, okay, we're going to give him, he's only 19, let's give him very competitive fights, fights he can definitely win and keep the hype train going. Because, you know, as much as we were all talking about uh, Gustafson and Cormier, 
the word around in this office too, Sage Northcutt was the talk of the town. Yeah, so you can't overprotect it because you need him to be challenged too. You, the way to develop at 19 in the fire is get hot, you know, get in there, be pushed, be dropped, have those experiences. So you don't want to overprotect him, that's for sure. Sage Van Zandt is going the same way. She has tough fights. So I think that's what they'll do. It's a weird thing to even be looking at this idea of star power before a super skill, but this is the reality of an entertainment sport, and so it's something we're gonna have to keep an eye and on. And just so you know, you just said Sage Van Zandt. Coming up, we take a look at UFC Fight Night, Poirier versus Duffy when five rounds on FN continues. Welcome back to Five Rounds. Coming up October 24th, the UFC returns to Ireland. We have your preview show, 3 p.m. Eastern, as we are getting you set for Dustin Poirier as he takes on Ireland's own Joseph Duffy. And then keep it locked at 4 p.m. as we present the main card, the main event included. Also, a heavyweight tilt between Stipe Miocic and Big Ben Rothwell, Patty Houlihan, and Luis Smolka. Great card for our fans of FN. And you gotta talk about the main event, Dustin Poirier versus Joseph Duffy. Duffy fighting in his own backyard. We all know how good uh, Dustin Poirier is. We've called his fights before he went to the UFC. Very good on the ground. He's got a mean streak. He can knock your block off. Well, for Joseph Duffy, this is a guy who fell in love with boxing. Uh, obviously had that submission background and said, you know what? I'm good at boxing, I'm good at submissions, but I need somewhere that I can put it all together traveled to Montreal to train with the TriStar guys and made an impressive debut in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. What do you expect from this guy moving forward? Yeah, this is a this perfect matchmaking. Absolutely. Joe, great job, man. Beautiful matchmaking. Is because, it, though? No? If, if Poirier comes out and really takes it to this guy, because we believe that he seems to be on a different level when you look at whether he fights at 155 pounds or 145 pounds, he is always yeah. a part of the top of the division. Yeah, yeah, and he's fun to watch. I love it because it is going to let us know where Joe Duffy is, and it's right at that point. The reports, his hands look awesome, great body shots he's been using in the UFC. His ground game is really good. Like you mentioned, training at TriStar is not only how good Coach Faraz's techniques and training and system is, but he has a room full of really talented guys. I don't know if we'll see some body shots here or not, but man, has he been using them well. The left hook to the body, his hands are clean and crisp, and that's the deal. You're a jiu-jitsu guy only until the day that you realize, oh my God, boxing is such a beautiful sport and I want to train it nonstop. The high kick there, talented guy. So what do you want to do? Let's test him. He's, he's young, but not ridiculously young. So let's really see if he's up there. Poirier is exactly that test. Poirier is tough, fun to watch, exciting, never backs down. It's a great fight. Do you expect this fight to, to I mean, it's going to start standing, but for, if you're Dustin Poirier, you would expect, this is where I want to keep this fight. Yeah, I can take the fight down to the ground. I can use my submission game because he has a very good submission game. But why play into the hands of Joseph Duffy? Why not try to hurt this guy in your best area? I think that's the game. He likes just rocking guys, <laughs> yeah. too. He just likes doing it. We saw him in Quebec City, and he had a fight where he stood in the middle and just traded knuckle and chin with, uh, with an opponent. And then you know, I, I said, you know, this guy, you could dance around him and jab him out or take him down and submit him. He's like, this is how I like to fight. This is what I enjoy doing. And you see it in him. He's enjoying him. That, that's the fight right there from Quebec City. And uh, look, at this is not how he had to fight this fight, but he likes to fight that way. So Duffy will oblige him, and his takedown, uh, his takedown defense is very good, and his ground game is also underrated, so he'll fight you wherever. He'll fight you in the office right here. He'll fight you right here on the table. He doesn't care. <laughs> what, what, what does a fight like this, what does it mean for the division? Is it, like, for if you're Dustin Poirier, it's like, well, people know my name. Yeah. Not a lot of people know Joseph Duffy, so why take a fight like this? I think Poirier just likes fighting fight. dudes, and you gotta go through someone. Everybody's talking about this. It's a main event, too, over in Europe. He's also been over there and fought another famous Irishman, so uh, it's gonna be a good one, man. I can't wait for this. Next live week, on the yep, it's, uh, everything's gonna be live. The main card happening right here. Next week, we'll take a closer look at the entire card. Stipe Miocic and Ben Rothwell and Luis Smolka, a guy you need to look out for. That's it for us. He's Robin Black. I'm John Ramdean. Got to thank the crew. We'll see you guys next week.